Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, you're not sure where you, where you ended up. Uh, you ended up in Germany. Yes, Germany. Uh, we are a couple of homesteaders here in Germany. And yeah, it's an adventure, hence the name, Rock and K Adventures. So yeah, enjoy the show. All right, y'all, so I have been on the injured reserve. Uh, the other day, I literally was just bending over, picking up uh, a piece of paper off the floor and tweaked my back. So I, uh, I got to the point where I could barely walk for a couple of days um, because it was my lumbar area, and I think it was maybe a disc or something like that. Um, you know, my, uh, my back was just, it was done. So he was gimpy for a few days. Yeah. If, I don't know if you heard that, but she said I was uh, a little gimpy for a couple of days and yeah, so Rachel's been doing the heavy lifting. Um, as you saw in part of the, part of the, uh, the footage or you will see in part of the footage. Uh, she took care of mowing the lawn and everything like that. And today, she took care of the garden. Um, I was going to help her do this in the garden. And um, she got out here and got to, to doing it um, because she was worried I was going to hurt my back more. And quite frankly, I'm worried I'm going to hurt my back more because, yeah, um, it was it was hurting. It was it was bad juju. But I'm going to flip you around. So as you can see, she went through and she knocked in those uh, T-posts there and there. She's doing what some would call, I think, a Carolina weave. I think that's what they call this on the tomatoes. So she has a bunch of romas that they really, in late, Late start in the season. Um, this was like our third go on this garden. And it, never mind the weeds. Once she has them uh, tied up, it is the weekend. We'll go through and pull weeds again. Um, but, yeah, look at all those Romas on there. So this is our sauce uh, tomatoes. And then, of course, we have over here where you can see these really took off. You can see some of the... Um, the little, uh, the tomatoes the cherry tomatoes. tomatoes. And then, you know, she's got a uh, beefsteak in there somewhere. Yeah, they haven't really started producing yet. And then last weekend, y'all saw us pull some corn. And we're going to pull some more because you can see the tassels. Well, there goes Rachel. You can see the tassels have uh, died off on them, meaning they're ready to go.
So in the past, we used, um, you know, those cages that you put on tomatoes. And these plants get heavy. Like, look at look at the those tomatoes. We do the whole pruning and all that on the, you know, on the suckers here and there, and actually cut some of the lower foliage off, stuff like that to keep the plants on the lighter side. But man, they they do produce. They produce a lot. But Prunes they're are a meat tomato because they don't have a lot of seeds if they're sauce. And they get heavy. And then, of course, the slugs love them. And since we've been battling slugs this year... Yep. We don't need to ruin the, lose the crop to a bunch of slimy little friggers. So the idea of this weave is you go one way around the tomatoes with a string. And then you move up a little bit and you, move, you go the other way around the, the tomatoes. And it creates like a support structure for them. So as you can see, she was, or we, because it is a we thing, we didn't get the, the Romas staked up right away. So you can see some of them are like spread out. Well, that'll change as we do this weave and then get some of the weeds out of there. It'll, they'll straighten up and yeah. It picks the fruit up off the ground. It's going to be a lot of tomatoes again this year. Yeah, but... I didn't really have enough last year for all of your sauce. So I'm hoping this year I have enough for the sauce that we need for the year. And we are getting a light rain. It's not bad. If you look, we are overcast. Quite quite overcast. Yeah, it's supposed to rain pretty good today. We just need to wait a few more minutes. Farmers are saying the same thing. They're running the grain and they're just running like shit. So we gave Rachel one of the microphones now. You can hear her talking. Apparently I'm talking too much. What it's I was not saying. not that she's talking too much. It's that she's kind of far away from me and you guys aren't going to be able to hear her. But now what I was saying can. is that the farmers are running like crazy trying to beat this rain because they're pulling in their grain, their oats. And they got to get it off before it gets wet or they'll lose it all. Yeah, you can hear the wind picking up and our wind chimes going. Uh, hopefully the little wind socks on our microphone setups here work. And we got Penny Dog. Yeah. Right, Penny Dog? Well, she can't be trusted in the house. She eats her brother's dog food. Yep. So for those that you don't know... We have a border collie, and our border collie is very, very old. Very old. Um, our old man is about 18 years old, and yes, that is ancient for a border collie, and we know this. But he eats when he wants to eat. Um, that's going to be probably his undoing. Is he's going to stop eating, and um, he's already at minimum weight, I would say. But anyway, if we leave the food down where the border collie can get to it the german shepherd our piglet eats it yeah the german shepherd gets to it and we've had problems with this girl right getting fat getting fat and you don't want shepherds getting and fat she's looking at the ground because she's like oh they're you, talking about you're talking me. about me <laughs> yeah but she has uh been known to just eat his food eat her food and we had a time where She's tried our to eat girl, cat food. Our girl was probably 20-ish pounds overweight. She's at a good weight now, and as you can see, she's got a little gray on her muzzle. Yeah, and uh, she's she's older. She's uh, probably around I think 12 or 13. 13, yeah. Um, and she's in good health. We've we've had our little our little surgeries and our stuff like that with this one because. Um, she broke her foot playing frisbee. Yeah, yeah, she likes extreme sports. And uh, and then she um, ended up having to have her lady parts all removed because yeah. um, of a infection that we almost lost her on that one, but we didn't. She pulled right on through, and she's such a sweetheart. 
Everybody looks at these dogs like they're all, oh, they're vicious and they're crazy. This is the sweetest dog that I have ever met. And she has, this is the first dog I've had that her feelings get hurt. Yeah. And I mean, you can, you can see it in her face when, when you yell at her, you're like, you feel bad. But yeah, so anyway, that's, that's our, our penny dog. So she's gonna, she's gonna stay out here with us even though we're getting a little bit of mist. So this week's uh, this week's installment's gonna be a lot of talking and a little bit of working uh, because yeah, um, I'm on the injured reserve. Yeah, he um, was laid up for almost two and a half days. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of work that's on, that's waiting. And I took some vacation time, um, and you're gonna see us hit it hard hard and heavy. First week on, of September. On that first week of September when we're on vacation. Because, yeah, I need to make sure my back is good for that point. Um, we got a lot of work uh, planned. And, yeah, so I'm enjoying a cup of coffee. Uh, Winter's and, coming and we're not ready for it. Yeah. Winter is coming. For lack of a better of a better term, um, I'm gonna wipe you off here. And the good thing is, we are we hit this point where our garden is going crazy. Um, it, took, it took a while. Um, we we struggled with this garden. Um, this is actually our third planting for the season, because. We lost the first planting to frost. We lost the second planting to slugs. Slugs, um, yeah. Slugs took out everything, and we we couldn't understand it because they took out even the tomatoes, which is which is just. Well, they took weird. out the corn, and they don't normally eat corn. And they took out corn, even though corn was is so uh, sturdy and rugged that normally they don't they won't touch the corn. But they went through and they decimated the garden. So this is our third planting. And we hit the hot season and stuff kind of just, and I say hot season, it didn't get really hot. Uh, yeah. We had a couple of weeks where it was warm. Um, but all of a sudden everything's taken off. And you know, our corn, which we thought was stunted because if you look, it's not really tall. Well, Mama got to looking at the seeds and realized that she bought a short version of uh, of corn, corn that's more for the garden. And something that I just noticed that's kind of crazy is here on the tips of this, it looks like kernels grew. Let me flip you around. Right here, it's like there's kernels of corn up here on the on what was the tassels. I'm imagining that those would be seeds. I don't know. I've I've never seen that before. Kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, doing corn is new to me. Um, I grew up with, you know, the cucumbers, carrots, string beans. The carrots are doing good. Tomatoes, um, stuff like that. All, all your, your salady type vegetables. Um, never really grew the corn or um, like here we're doing onions, uh, potatoes. Um, yeah, and then what's gone crazy and it really th this is the plants that really got like destroyed. <laughs> is the the watermelon um, our vines so rachel decided this year um we brought in some potting soil or not potting soil but topsoil and she decided that we were going to plant along the bank because we're going to run the vines down the bank right so i'll flip you around and show you what i mean so if you look and they grow really good this way because it keeps the the moisture in the soil some people are going to be like oh that's it like in the grass no but trust me this works great um it's kind of a version of a no weed garden 
So that has taken off. That is a, I'm thinking is a pumpkin. Um, there are all types of gourds over here, but there's also like here, this cucumber has absolutely taken off. And these are struggling and yeah, there's some weed that needs to be done. But yeah, they took off. And Penny, Penny's back there like, I want to go in the house so I can steal some food. Come on, Pen Pen. Penny. Come on. That's a good girl. Come on, girly. But anyway, I digress. So coming up, what, what our plans are, and we'll spill some beans here. Uh, it's pretty funny saying beans, garden, yeah. But anyway, um, we're, we'll go in the garden, in the greenhouse here. And so part of what we're going to be doing, and it's kind of echoey in here on the one channel. Um, Rachel's over on the other channel of microphone. But we're going to be painting this wall. Uh, so she's going to come in, she's going to pressure wash and paint. So we switched up cameras, uh, so the video is going to change a little bit. Um, she pulled two ears of corn, and uh, let me flip around. And she this pulled one, these two, ear, two ears of corn. This one's like And thick. yeah, so now she's going to open up this one, and we're going to see how they, how they fared. Oh, all the way to the oh end. that's amazing. Look at that. That was beautiful. Nice. Nice. Perfect. That is amazing. Okay. And she's got another one. It's not as big, but I think it's all the way to the top. Yep. Looks that way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Another amazing cob. And this is what it's about. This is about knowing where your food came from, man. We don't fertilize with anything but critter poop, cow poop, and water. It, we, where I come from, we call it poop tea. So it looks this one's not as good. It's got some. It's a little. It's a little. Um, deformities. Yeah, but look at that. Look at all those kernels. Yes. And this one. This that one is amazing. just that one's like amazing. Quality. So those of you that don't come from a rural area, in the fall of every year, in rural areas in the south and in the north as well, they have county fairs, and you always try and grow your best, veg best biggest and best vegetables, and you enter them in for a competition. And this one is pretty good to. It would uh, definitely at least take second place. <laughs> So the thing is, there's some other ears of corn here where the tassels have fallen off, which I'll Rachel's, soon because I'm waiting Rachel's for probably going to grab those couple too, I'm so, for that, corn cobber. so that, so that, um, this one's popcorn. Yeah. Hold on a minute. So this one, is it the last row or it's, the, first, or the middle row? The last, oh, it's that row. There's popcorn. So you can see the tassel fell off of that one. Yeah, this has got a slug, slug was on it. And you can see a slug was on it because it's got the snail trail. So we might have lost that ear. That ear doesn't look like it even matured. Mm -hmm. That's so what's going on. She's pulling it. My corn husker pulls the corn off the cobs. Especially. So what she's talking about is she ordered the, the corn cobber. The, the deal that you are able to strip the kernels off. Normally because you do it with a knife, but I'm going to be lazy. Her idea is to I'm going to freeze it this year. Shuck it, pop the kernels off, and freeze it. Do like the steamer bags, but we're going to use Ziploc bags to do it that way. It's not so too bad. we'll flip you around, and well, that one it's that one did okay. Bad. Yeah, so we got we got a mini cob. This is beautiful, though. The color is absolutely wonderful. I mean, I'm really happy with this. What do you call it? This. Um, we we really thought that we lost brand. this corn. Yeah, we did. It was so small. Because it, it was, was so short. Yeah. Of the cold. It was just too much 
cold conditions. All right, now this one has nothing left. This one. Oh, uh, this one got a bug. I've never seen that. It's a bug. But we're gonna show you. It's a mite. It's a corn mite. Some type of bug in there. And this is the joys of farming. You know, of growing your own food. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the the, the corn that's here. It's perfectly usable. You just go like this and pop them off. And then, of course, it'll have to be washed before I. Yeah, with her with her rinsing or not rinsing with her taking it down to just kernels. Um, I can pick and choose what I keep. She can, with her bringing it down to just kernels and using the, the little corn cob tool to take all the kernels off, any any of the corn that's mature um, will make kernels for freezing. And I don't know if you heard I mean, us I, talking. I've got to pop it all off this week. It's all ready. Yeah, for I don't know if you heard us talking, but here, these last two are supposedly popcorn. popcorn. Grown popcorn. So it's a species of corn or a type of corn, whatever you want to call it, solid. for making popcorn. popcorn. Mm. But she's going to have to come through um, this week, during the week, and um, what we don't want to do is pull them all out, and now we're stuck waiting for the corn kernel remover yeah. tooly thing. Um, so it it's safer to leave it on the on the stalk, but it looks like it's all ready. Um, to, a week or two ago, you saw us pull a couple of cobs, and we used it and we ate it for our dinner, and it was man, it was delicious. It was perfect. I mean, there's one or two that still like these still have to. I mean, these are going to be small. Well, that one's good, but some of them are gorgeous. But, like this one's still green. Yep. So I don't want to take the plants out because there are still. Cobs still forming, but there's these are really full. Oh, this one's really full. I know some men that would be envious of that. What Rachel doesn't realize is her microphone doesn't work, neither does mine, oh. because they're hooked up to the GoPro oh. that we had to switch off because it was overheating and. Y'all out there using GoPros, how are you keeping them cool? Um, yeah, please let us know. Yeah. Uh, you took it out of the case because I put it. I put it. No, I have it. I have it in a media case because we're using, of course, microphones. And it, I, I'm going to order the deal where you can have access to the USB port um, outside of having the media mod on there. And maybe I don't know if the media mod is insulating the camera or what. But if you're using a, 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 so I have a GoPro Hero 12, GoPro Hero 12, and I can get 15, 20 minutes ish, and this thing just overheats and shuts itself off, and it's not hot out here. It's it's warm. Don't get me wrong. It's you know, probably 70s. You know, it's not hot, and and the, the camera keeps overheating and turning itself off. Um, how are you guys keeping these things cool? So like I said. We were gonna harvest some onions today. And so she's working see away. where the slugs have been eating them? But she's saying you can see where slugs have been, oh yeah, the slugs have been eating the onions. Yeah. And look, we, got a, we got a bug there. highly unusual. Usually they leave onions alone. So she'll pull these onions and then what she'll do is with the, like the stalks that are on them, she's gonna braid them together and actually hang them up for them to dry. Um, that's a really good way to like preserve them. Get your onions like ready to eat. I mean, it's, it's a bit early. Normally, you wait till the stalks are totally brown. But look at those onions. And the slugs are just too bad. I can't. I don't want to risk my my harvest. Well, those onions were, turned out really good. Oh, there's some babies in there. Yeah. All right. That one was ready. I mean, they're good sized onions. I mean, you could see compared to my hand. This year I didn't use seeds. This year I used um, starter onions. And I gotta say, I'm sold. So I'll probably just do starter onions for the rest of the, 
the rest of my garden time, gardening time. Good root systems. And see some of them, I don't even have anything to braid. Look at that. They ate all of it off. Dang slugs. They've just been horrible this year. I don't know what it is, but everybody's complaining about it. We've got them coming in the house. My uh, one German friend, she's had them coming in her house and she lives on the second floor. Am I not on? You're on. Wow, I can smell them from here. Oh yeah, they're strong. Some of them really thrived. Mm. Um, and it's probably a case of Ooh, that one's what the, uh, the slugs were able to eat and not eat. Um, she's gonna take all these, of course. And wow, look at that one. Yeah. She's gonna take all these and of course hang them up and let them dry out a little bit and be ready for eating. That's the good thing about this particular root crop. It doesn't go bad as long as you keep it away from moisture. And I mean, if you really think about it. Look at that. Yeah, by the time you get an onion in the store, it's been picked, piled, put on a tractor, you know, put or put on a trailer, I guess. <laughs> And then goes to the sorting factory. Goes to, a, goes to a facility to sort sizes and and quality, and then it gets put on a truck again to uh, like a storage facility, and then it goes from the storage facility to your store. So I mean that could take days to weeks, right? So oh, I'm sure with onions it's probably months. These here will know. And we'll be able to use them pretty much in a week or so. Um, it, I mean, you can use them right away. They'll just be really, really green. Very, very strong. They're really strong. I mean, the smell is really strong. Watch. Looks like the ants liked making homes around them. Yep. All right, last one. Last one. This one's a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Look how big it is. Wow, that's a lot of onions, babe. So now, <laughs> what, now she can get in here and run her tiller in this spot in the garden. So like I was saying, she can get in there and she can till the garden now in that area. And... Not so much for a winter planting, but to turn that soil, get that green material down into the... We also have to lime this year. Into the, into the, into the dirt, to turn it into more dirt, of course. Um, I don't know if you heard that, but she was saying that we got to get some lime and adjust the pH here in the garden. Because um, pH-wise... It's our, neutral. My garden's neutral. We need, to, we need it to be... I, and I forget what the lime does. Whatever the lime does, it needs to be more on that side of the scale. Because every year we struggle with peas and beans. Legumes. Yeah, and we found legumes. out that that's the reason. Um, yeah, we tested the soil. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the thing it is... It came in 100% neutral. Yeah, the thing is, it takes time for lime to work. Mm. Um, and what I mean is, we can lime that we can lime it, and it's good for a little while, because basically the pH adjusts itself over time. And so our 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 plan is to lime it, till it, lime it, till it, lime it, and then before we do our planting next season, we'll lime it again, and till it, so that well we have I that. will. 
We'll lime it twice, then I'll measure the, yeah. the pH again. If it needs more lime, we'll put it on before planting season. Um, but, I mean, theoretically, once you lime, you need a good rain and then till it and then plant. So it's really going to depend on what the first two limings do. You know, if they bring it from purple into blue, which is, the you know, the pH scales, then I'm going to stay with the blue because that's almost yeah. perfectly ideal for all vegetables. And then the other thing is weeds don't like it when it's the pH is at that, that yeah. level. So the weeds aren't as abundant. And we were wondering because, you know, you watch and you see the farmers all doing their fields. And they don't, you know, I know some of them commercially they use, you know, um, weed killers and, weed killers and stuff like that. And I know most of the food here is like bio, you know, it's, yeah. it's organic, yeah. which means they're not using the weed killers and stuff. But I mean, they fertilize you'll see rows with, of corn with manure. With, you'll see rows of corn with barely any weeds. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, how, how is that possible? Or you'll see them, you know, they have a beautiful pasture field, zero, almost zero weeds. And it comes down to pH. And when you adjust the pH so that your legumes like it, the weeds don't like it. So, yeah, there's a benefit to adjusting the pH in the, in the garden for us. Um, because nobody likes weed and it's, yeah. it's no fun, right? It's a lot of work. Um, especially if it gets away from you. Um, but the thing is, is, I mean, you can keep it weeded for months on end and then you go through the rainy season where you can't get out and till or weed. And, you know, by the time you get out here, you got a freaking jungle and it's hard to recover from that, which is why we've kind of sort of gone to where we keep it weed whacked and we do a no till, um, and I think that, that I like it because you do, you're conserving that water better as yeah, well. Yeah, it keeps moisture in that soil. Yeah. But the problem for me is, is the slugs. It gives them, you know, a no scorched to, earth. And it gives them a place to hide, yeah. uh, literally. Um, they, they can hide in that, under, that undergrowth, that undergreen uh, during the day where the birds can't get to them. And they don't dry out. And then they also, the, the slugs don't like dry conditions. Yeah. So it's a double-edged sword. You want to keep your, your moisture in your, in your garden, but you want the slugs to go away. But so. we have noticed a difference this year by letting the, just keeping the weeds weed whacked. We've noticed that we're having to water less. So it is, I mean, it doesn't look as good as a nicely... You know, it doesn't tilled, look, no weed garden. It doesn't but, look manicured and as and, and stuff like that, but it produces. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, so pro it's probably very going to be productive. a method that, you know, we'll till in the spring and I'll get the ground turned over real good and of course de rocked because you know I grow rocks all winter long. Um so I have to harvest my rocks in the spring before I could put my vegetables in. And then uh I think that we'll just continue along with the you know, the the no till well, we'll have to pull all the tea posts. Well, yeah, and, you know, I mean, so. that's just to turn it over. We got to do that. Yeah. I mean, every year I have to clean out my garden, you know, the old corn stalks, the old, you know, tomato plants, anything that's left, you have to clean out and start over. And I mean, every year we end up with volunteer tomatoes all over the damn place yep. because the tomatoes, you lose one tomato in the ground, you're probably dropping 25, 30 seeds. And they yeah. come back, you know, yep. and then when you till it, it moves them so they travel. Yeah. You know, you'd be like, there weren't even tomatoes in this area last year. Yeah. And it works that way with potatoes a yes, lot. Yes, which is why my potatoes if are you contained. Ever, if you guys ever grow potatoes, make sure you grow them in a, rose, a raised bed. Um, you can't get them all. You can never get them, them all. Because potatoes are a forever crop. Once you plant them in an area, you're going to have potatoes there for the rest of your life. Yeah. So You can't always get the little... All right, y'all. So we're back on the GoPro. <laughs> and uh, it cooled down a little bit. Uh, I, got, I got a breeze here. I mean, you can hear the wind chimes behind me. And so, as you saw, we got some corn off the off the stalks. She got, uh, what did you get over there? There's six of them. She got six of them. Um, she doesn't realize now the mics are on and she we can actually hear her all the way over there. Um, so you got what? You got six. All right, so let me flip you around and show you the take for the garden just for well, today. Well, I still have to pull the tomatoes. So you can see that basket of onions and uh, corn. So we got some good corn. So the homestead garden is putting out 
Um, she's got some some tomatoes, which she's handing me now. Yeah, they're they're done. They're supposed to be that color. Yeah, they're they're an orange-ish, yellow-ish tomato. But let me I'm show looking you. at my ugly beefsteaks. Here's here's where we're at. That's just for today. I got two. Don't of get them. me wrong. It took a while to get there. But she's talking about her her beefsteaks. The, 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 weird. Hang on a second. No, no. They're supposed to be ugly, but they're a beefsteak. They look all muscular. There's another one over here coming in. And then all these are salad tomatoes that are all green. And then little cherry. No, oh, these are the yellow ones again. These are a yellowish. Mm -hmm. Here's some more ugly tomatoes. You can see more in here. Oh, this is all ugly tomatoes. Look, there's one there. Yeah. But these will get huge. These these are a beefsteak that, you know, they get about this big around. But they're, they stay ugly looking. But they're mostly meat. There's hardly any seeds. And I wanted to uh, add a little bit of different tomato variety into the sauces this year, which is why I chose those ones. Because there's not, I don't have to worry about taking all the seeds out. I hate taking seeds out. So we're going to get off and go on to other things. Yeah. One of the other things is letting this camera cool off. Um, yeah, we're fighting that. Yeah, if you know what's wrong, let us know in the comments, please. I mean, so this is one of our investments to make our videos better and stuff. And thus far, I have to say, I'm not very I'm impressed. Not, I'm not impressed, yeah. And uh, it was a lot of money. It's unfortunate it was a lot of money, yep. All right, y'all, so we're going to wrap this video up. But as you saw, we got a pretty good harvest out of the garden here. And yeah, it's putting food on the table, right? It's, that's what it's all about. Uh, not only is it food on the table, but it's food that we know where it came from. If you haven't, please click that like, click that subscribe, and yeah, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get this video uh, all edited and put together for you, and get it out to you. And hey, we love each and every one of you. And in sticking with my motto, if you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the WhatsApp. You know you'd love to hear from them too. And until the next installment, Auf Wiedersehen. Mm -hmm.